All right, good morning. Um, so my name is Robert Schweikert. I work for SUSE. And today I will um, talk about the cloud a little bit. And then hopefully we will get a good discussion going in the room to see how we as a technical community can get away from the hype and actually convey to people that are interested in the cloud what this thing really is. Because I think when we talk about cloud in the technical community, most of us have a general idea what people are talking about. But once you go outside the technical community to meet a customer or somebody else, you will click, quickly find, I think, at least that's what I find, that they don't really know what this whole thing is. Of course, everybody has heard of Amazon, but yeah, well. And that is the premise of this talk. And again, hopefully we can get a good discussion going. The uh, session is being recorded, so if you have anything, please raise your hand and I will come around with the microphone. Okay, so if you believe the hype, that we've been in now for what two years maybe three years three four maybe longer yeah anybody else another number five years of cloud hype maybe yeah then the cloud will magically solve all your problems it's just there and every all your data is there and every all your problems will go away unfortunately as we know that is not the case so what's going on here Okay, if you look through the daily press, even still today after four or five years of cloud hype, um, when we talk about the kernel, for example, right, what you find is there's talk about file systems that we support. There's hardware support, networking stacks. We even heard that in some keynotes yesterday, how BSD supposedly has a better networking stack than Linux, but whatever. Right? When we talk about the kernel, somehow we manage to get to keep people on track and talk about the things that really matter. Networking, file systems, you know, virtualization, things like that. But when you look at people talking about the cloud, all you hear is the fluffy stuff. Yeah, self-service, it's always on. Magically, all your data is there. Oh, and yeah, there are these cloud service providers and everything just works. So is that just me? Does that bother anybody else? Well, it bothers me. So last year at LinuxCon, so even at technical conferences, I said in a talk of what I call the four horsemen of the apocalypse. What was discussed? Cloud APIs and cloud lock-in, and that may all be well and fine, but interesting enough, nobody actually mentioned the underlying image technology, which is really where you get locked in, right? You cannot take an image from cloud A and stick it into cloud B unless they happen to run the same infrastructure. So you cannot take the Amazon EC2 image, stick it into Rackspace or HP Cloud or Dell Cloud or whomever else is out there because they all run different infrastructures. So this is where the real lock-in occurs, not at the API level. Almost everybody provides an EC2 compatible API and that's fine. And even if they don't, it's a, number of, it's a matter of learning a few commands, right? But the real cloud lock-in happens at the image level. Nobody appears to be talking about that, unless I'm missing something. So, I think that we should finally fix this screensaver bug that turns the screensaver on when the machine is in presentation mode. But that is... <laughs> yes, if it were in the cloud, right? So, maybe there's not enough technical stuff to talk about, but if you look about it, right, when you look at cloud, you have to talk about storage. Obviously, images have to be stored, right? File systems are important. You have to talk about memory management, networking, image creation, hypervisor support, I.O. optimization, virtual I.O., virtual network stuff. So there's plenty of technical stuff to talk about. It just seems it is either hard to find or it is not there. Oh, that was interesting, Ringtone. Okay, VMware is the leader today in the private cloud. I claim that to be true, and I don't think that many will dispute. 
Way back when, when Linux first made an appearance on the scene, the Free Software Foundation had a list of killer apps that was widely publicized, and they decided these are all the apps that we have to have on Linux to make it successful on the desktop and in other areas. Well, where is our list that we have to have to beat VMware out of their business? VMware is very expensive and they have a lot of features. We are not on par in the open, open source world with the features that they have. But where is our list, right? Where is our list in the free software community that says, this is the stuff we have to have and this is the stuff we need to concentrate on. It's not a roadmap. We don't do well with roadmaps, but we need targets. Here are some targets we could pick up. Maybe the cloud community is too fragmented. We have OpenStack, CloudStack, Eucalyptus, Open Nebula. Those are the most popular cloud frameworks. Um, or maybe we have insufficient communication between the projects. Maybe we need, we need a more concerted effort um, at the LF. Um, like a you know cloud working group that creates this list or whatever. So you can see I have more questions than answers. So what do we need? Some good old fashioned flame wars and mud flinging? Maybe that's what we need, right? Maybe we need to get people riled up and say, this is, you know, there's a lack here. This is where we need to go. We need to light some flames. Okay. What can we do as, te as techies to dampen the hype, steer the attention to what matters, and um, you know what is responsible for um, pushing the cloud? What is our responsibility for pushing the cloud? And that's it. So these are all my questions and things that I have to throw out. And from here on, it is open mic morning. So hopefully you didn't stay too long at the party or at the after party party. And with that, who's first? Yes. All right. So I guess the question uh, that comes to mind, so you mentioned, for example, VMware is you know ubiquitous and they have a feature set and quote unquote, we don't have the features VMware has. Um, and I think one of the things you mentioned is, you know, okay, who's who's wor who's who's worried about that? Is there any any place where you can where someone can point out or can talk about what features VMware has that say OpenStack doesn't have? And you know, even just some kind of like informal, like, well, when I used VMware, I was able to do yada yada yada, and then when I went to try OpenStack, it wouldn't let me do that or something like that. Just any kind of information at all. You know, looking for a starting place, I guess. Right, and that is what, in my opinion, is missing. Anybody have any answers to that? No? Okay, so even the companies, and I claim us as partially responsible, we also have a cloud product. Even we don't have a list, right? I don't think IBM has a list. Neither do the Red Hat guys, I think. Uh, so collectively, I think we're falling on our face, right? We have a, a serious competitor. We have products, all, you know, all of the vendors have products, and still we're missing the target, right? Maybe we have reached a point like John had in his presentation yesterday, if you saw the weather report. There should be taillights because VMware is clearly ahead of us and there should be taillights and there should be a target but yet we seem to be stomping around in the dark. So, I don't know. What do people think? Who's, who should be stepping up here? The guys that make the cloud products? Should it be coming from the community? The OpenStack developers? CloudStack? Or is everybody just out free floating around? Mark. Well, so I guess I'd kind of like to step back a bit. Sure. Where do we think we need to abstract the clouds? Are we are we back to you know trying to solve the problem at the ODF level? 
so that you can actually move images, whole images around onto a, into, a, into a cloud deployment? Or do you want to abstract at the API level so that you can just move the applications around? I think it would, you know, at least from my perspective, it would be helpful to understand where you think the problem is. Is it is it at that OVF level so that you can deploy the you know a whole virtual machine image into a cloud and and just run the application plus the middleware or whatever it's needed, or is it just solely at the business application level? Well, from my point of view, um, the applications actually don't come really into play. An application would be bound to an image that runs on a given OS, right? And so that image is the workload. What do we do with the workload, right? So you mentioned one thing, you can move it around. And that, I think, is where VMware potentially still has an advantage of, with a vMotion and other things. But we may be behind. Um, but I think there are other features that VMware has that, you know, as far as management is concerned, um, that we, you know, maybe maybe the functionality is there, but it's not as integrated, not as well integrated, right? There's performance monitoring, you know, I mean, obviously everybody can launch an image up and down. That's easy, right? Light switch on and off. Every interface can do that. VMware can do that. vMotion, I think we're a bit behind. And there are other aspects, um, but I think you know it is around the workload and not at the application level. And I don't think that the API level is an issue because in the end, you know, if somebody decides to go with cloud A, either private or public, they're going to learn that API. And if they have to move it, learning ten new commands is—I don't see that as a big deal, right? Collectively, we manage to move from you know. CVS and SVN and whatever was popular, you know, a few years ago to Git and almost every developer and developers are hard to convince had no problem of learning, you know, 20 or 50 new Git commands and now that works. And so I think at the customer level, we have the same thing. Wait, wait, it's getting recorded. You need to speak into the microphone. <laughs> so, so. To be clear, then, what we're defining is the ability to, to manage at the image layer, yeah, including the OS, any middleware, plus the application. Yeah, that's what okay. I would consider. Gordon. And I'm going to push back a little bit on that view of cloud, because I would argue that is a very traditional server-centric view of how applications and services run. That it's, you know, that, I mean, even worrying about something like vMotion, for example, as a view that you'll be stateful application workloads, et cetera, that you need to protect, as opposed to these um, kind of ephemeral, very fine grained type of workloads that are what the IASs you have up there are really designed to manage. Okay. Fair. Um, yeah, and I mean, the motion, we, and, and I think, uh, you know, as far as V-motion and moving images around, it is probably also more hype than reality, right? It's one of the features that is on a checklist often and may not be often used while standing up an image and then letting it run forever more on you know a given system until the system falls over and then you bring up another image somewhere else may be more important question is are we are we communicating that message sufficiently so that you know when when you go talk to somebody about cloud um you know one of the things that i often hear is like well, VMware does this, can you do that? It's like, well, do you really use it? And often the answer is no, right? But this is the conversation that I don't think is happening because, you know, people are focused on uh, the cloud and it will all just work and it will solve your problems instead of being focused on what is it that people really use and need. So I, uh, I think that there are certain use cases uh, where vMotion is important, but I, I completely agree with you. There are 
other use cases where remote-like functionality is irrelevant. If you have high availability built into the application, let's say some web server and distributing, you know, and having a sort of sort of a shared nothing model, then it doesn't really matter if they have high penetration. It's at the end it becomes it's extremely important to know what the use case is and based on those use cases map it to a certain amount of features. Yes, today, I mean that VMware has a large part of the market, and it's just not about the hypervisor. It's, it's mainly about two things in VMware. It's about the management application, that's the mob IT, which we sent in. Uh, do we have any comparable, comparable um, virtualization management application, let's say, in the Linux domain for our KVM and VM hypervisor? Well, we have, we have parts of the functionality. Right. It stops very often with the uh, Live snapshot. Uh, it stops very often with HA. Uh, so that is one aspect of VMware where I think it's useful. The second aspect is a typical VMware administrator, I think, is has got used to an extremely, for his aspect, a very nice, easy to use. Typical, you know, GUI, clicking, right mouse, clicking, whatever. We don't have that sort of thing in VMware. For a management application, for KVM, or for Linux, really. So it's, first of all, functionality which is missing in our, in our management space. Secondly, it's an easy use. And thirdly, is the fact that VMware has basically gone even one step higher in the stack with all its orchestrator facilities. Now this orchestrator is extremely VMware specific. Our customers don't even notice because they're so used to now writing all these orchestrator scripts that they're deeply tied into the whole VMware infrastructure. And now they come over and want to use um, you know, clouds using open source components. Suddenly they find out, oops, all my orchestrator scripts in which I've spent hundreds and thousands of hours, they just won't work. We need capabilities there so as to get these, just as we have capabilities today to uh, migrate an image from a VMware format to a QAMU or a Crawl format, we also need other tools to get those scripts adapted. And that's just, I mean, it's, I think it's a, it's a multi dimensional problem. Again, I, I'm not, I can't really give any answers to it because there are a lot of things I don't know. Right. So I, I just wanted to point out that at least on the on the storage front, uh, we are making progress um, addressing some of the future gaps. Um, you know, on. The end of this week, we'll, we'll be having the, the annual LSF, and then uh, and one of the you know, major topics there this year will be uh, copy offload, which goes um, a long way to addressing both the thin provisioning um, feature gap and also you know the vMotion type functionality that you that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So so I think we're uh, we're slowly addressing the problems. Um, you know, at the at the kernel level, um, you know, my question would rather be, you know, what are we doing at the at the middleware uh, level to to address the other feature gaps? Right, and and that seems, although I mean, obviously everybody's almost everybody's doing OpenStack. The other frameworks are, you know, still viable and are used. Uh, I know that Eucalyptus is actually quite popular with you know companies as private clouds. And maybe we are too fragmented, or maybe we are missing, you know, some rallying point. Oops, at the Linux Foundation, where we can all come together and say, we need to make these lists. We need to have targets, something to chase. I don't know. Other opinions, questions, comments. Uh, 
uh, it's up for debate whether Linux on the desktop is actually you know successful yet. Um, I think it is because I'm running one right now and I've run it for years and it works great for me. But um, the reason I bring this up is I think a lot of what we're discussing is the same as what people used to discuss about getting Linux on a desktop and what kind of things the proprietary operating systems still beat Linux at and what needed to happen before it was really a viable option for a lot more people. Um, and so I think rather than, than asking the question, are we doing enough, um, I think it should be, are we done? And clearly the answer is no, we still have a way to go, but I think we have a really good foundation. We have, we have competitors to VMware that are clearly viable enough that we're talking about them here. They're open source, they've been done collaboratively. I think those, those core things have been done right. Um, and, and now it's just, we have to keep doing what we're doing. Um, I don't think anybody has, has, has thought that we're done and has stopped working on it. We're, um, there's lots of companies working on making these things more viable options. Um, but I, I don't think we need to intentionally um, bring all these things together. We don't need to say, okay, OpenStack, CloudStack, Eucalyptus, we need less fragmentation, so we're all gonna work together. I think the solution is what happened with Linux on the desktop. Um, lots of people came up with different alternatives. There were projects that compete with each other. There's still competitors out there. Um, but over time, the winners emerged, um, different solutions became more stable, and now most people, with a fairly minimal investment of looking at the options, can find something that's gonna work really well for them. And I think that's what needs to happen with cloud, is over time, certain products will become more stable, they will become more competitive with, with VMware, um, and within a few years, I think, we will just naturally see some of these, these options will be really good competitors for VMware, just of their own merit. Um, I, I think in terms of the fragmentation and, and whether or not we're, we're seeing those tail lights there, um, I think that will naturally resolve itself. Um, I think we just need to remember we're not done, we need to keep working on it. Thank you. I think those are very good points. But I also think um, it brings up the an issue of whether we're doing enough in the area of desktop virtualization people may be using Linux individually, but for large scale enterprise use, you need to virtualize desktop so they can be moved from device to device. And I don't think we're doing very much in that area. Whereas VMware, Citrix and Microsoft are definitely moving into that area. Anything else? I'm here late, so I'm not sure the topic is, but I just want to share some experience, user experience. Um, I am I am a Unix Unix support person at at um, my work, but um, I also have forced to use a Windows desktop for my company wide stuff. So a lot of things I must use it, and I find that all the tools like you know Internet Access and things are given is compatible with Windows for only and even though China used Linux uh, personally I find all these challenges trying to you know seamless interface my work and with my personal stuff so that's that's a challenge I have so I need to get a better support a user seamless user interface in order to get the Linux to you know to spread and yeah well start. I mean most of the cloud interfaces are web based so they're really platform agnostic so I, I'm not, I don't think we have an issue there other than our web ma management applications may not be as nice or featureful as the VMware desktop application. So I'd like to actually take issue with what you said. I think while what you said is true, it's also unimportant now, right? On the client space, we don't do so much processing these days. Right. The importance of this is that all the processing is moving to the cloud. Right. It's moving in the server space. So this is important. We can't leave it to just, you know, ferment over the next three or four years and, and work out, you know, who's got the best things, who does the right thing. So I think the point of this session is actually much more important in terms of, you know, what we do, um, you know, what how we go about doing that whether you know where you abstract what you try and replicate in terms of the functions that vmware's got the, the points that you made how you do um injection into binaries to monitor the performance how you do you know what what interface so i think is actually much more important than the 
the client space. So, I, and I think it's got to evolve differently. Yeah. I mean, I think we are, in some respect, I think we're making great progress with those that will eventually be in the cloud, the application providers. I think there is progress being made. Many of those actually do, I think, understand what it means when their application runs virtualized, which is, you know, in the cloud. Um, but I'm not sure we're making good progress with those that eventually will run the cloud in the data centers. And I think that is getting drowned out by, after four or five years of hype, still the current trend of, well, it will all just work. When we, we as a technical community, we know better, right? It will not just work. There's a lot of work that has to go into that point. Anything else? Jeff. So part of what I think made Linux work um, and, and sort of dominant in a lot of spaces was not necessarily, ch you know, we talk about the chasing taillights thing where we were supposed to, like we were, all we were doing supposedly was, um, uh, you know, whatever Microsoft and Apple did, we would copy it and then that was our route to success. I think the actual truth is that a lot of what made Linux work, besides the obvious thing, you know, the fact that, you know, as they were talking about in the keynotes yesterday, the, um, the flexibility, the agility, the freedom aspects of it. I think the other thing that made Linux work was the fact that we ended up, we didn't just follow the paradigms that, you know, Apple and Microsoft and Oracle and those people set for us. We set our own paradigms and we said, hey, we can, we can do things differently and the way we do it is better. So I guess the question I'm asking, and I don't know the answer to this, is to what extent do we have an opportunity to sort of one-up VMware uh, and the people like VMware and say, you know, okay, yeah, you don't have, I don't know, and I'm just making this up, I have no idea. We don't have orchestrator scripts, right? But we can let you write your, you know, orchestration in, you know, directly in your favorite language of choice. You don't have to use our a special tool. You can just do it right in this, you know, in, in familiar environments that you're already using for all of your other infrastructure. It just works the same way. You don't have to learn anything new and it's not proprietary. You know, that could be an advantage if it existed. Um, those are the types of things that I think might end up being the answers to how the open cloud beats someone like VMware, not in being better than VMware at VMware's game, but at being better at being a cloud service in ways that VMware can't match. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Thank you for your attention. And keep thinking about it. Maybe we'll come up with some great solutions. <laughs>